But let's talk about uh, Pedro Castillo from the party Peru Libre. Tell me, he, okay, he won like only recently, like a couple months ago by a razor thin majority mm -hmm. against Kiko Fujimori, who is the daughter of Alberto Fujimori, yes. who was on like, who was actually under indictment for corruption or something at the yes. time. So tell me about Pedro Castillo. Tell me about um, where did he come from? And was this victory a, a surprise? Well, uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me uh, this afternoon and tonight here in Santiago de Chile. I'm very glad to be uh, to be here in the show and to be back in California, at least uh, via <laughs> this way. <laughs> Actually, yes. I, I, I brought my own Mac from the from this place. Nice. I, I have fond memories of California. So uh, Jose's got I, the UC Davis mug he just held up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so no, I, I, mean, I, I mean, it has been a, uh, for many of us have been a surprise, the victory of Pedro Castillo. Uh, he's a 50, 51 years old uh, rural school teacher. Uh, he comes from a rural background, uh, actually. And he was a, it was the first time he, that he ran for president. And he won, actually. It was that reason and many others. It was a, a, it was a very nice surprise. And actually, um, he, and he won to Keiko Fujimori. That for, for her, it's her third time running for president and she was very very close in all these three times really? uh, to get to 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 get victory and he couldn't right and so and the thing is that uh pedro castillo also is he's, he's the first of many many things he's the first left-wing president in peru he's the first uh president who comes from he's a school teacher from a from a public uh from the public government and but he's also the first president in 65 years who doesn't live in the capital city right so this is i mean this is wow. something, this is why the right wing and the right people they were so mad at him they were so they were trying to build this coalition in order to just to remove uh, him even though uh, even before he uh, he was taking the oath for president like a, a couple of weeks ago no so this has created a, a sort of a polarized environment here uh, but now the things are trying to get them a little more kind of calm because we are still facing, as you said, we are still facing a pandemic here, no? And even though the vaccination campaign is going very, very fast, we are, uh, the president and, and Peruvians, they are facing a very grim scenario ahead. Yeah, and, and tell me about that. Like, what is the situation in Peru? Why are there you know, five presidents in five years, mm. and and Pedro Castillo comes in. He's a he's a teacher. He mm -hmm. is not from the capital, which is crazy. And he he's got a slogan, which is "No more poor people in a rich country." Absolutely. What does yeah. that mean for a, a country like Peru? And what are the things that he's promising? Like, why was it has it been so attractive, given the amount of I, I'm assuming instability? Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. I mean, we we had. Five presidents in five years, and actually, and the and the, and the regular term for a president is five years here. But the problem is that we had a lot of crisis. There was a, a political crisis uh, last November when the Congress decided to remove, in a very tricky legal maneuver, decided to remove President Vizcarra, uh, who replaced President Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, who was elected in 2016, who also won to Keiko Fujimori. So there was. Uh, there was a, it was a mess totally. It was a mess, right. and, and this and the Congress he, they they put a very corrupt uh, president Manuel Marino who only lasted five days because there was a really there were big demonstrations actually one of the largest demonstration in the, in the history of the country and uh, that they overthrown this uh, this government. So now Pedro now the now this is the I mean it unfortunately it ended. Uh, this kind of this time of political stability that the country had between 2001 and 2019. Now it was a very a very good time in terms of the political stability. There were regular elections uh, and there was economic growth. So, mm -hmm. but what happened is that the pandemic exposed all these problems not only in terms of the politics but also in terms of the economic model with neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So this has been a very very complicated conjuncture uh, right now that. Uh, because we have the pandemic, it was political instability, and also this is a bicentennial of the country. So the triumph of Pedro Castillo is symbolic and is important in many, many ways. And we are really, we are hoping that this could end or at least 
uh, improve the political instability for at least a couple of months or a couple of years uh, from now. Yeah, because there has never been a left-leaning uh, president in Peru, like in other countries in, La in South America specifically, that exactly. pink tide didn't hit Peru. Mm -hmm. And it is an incredibly, um, yeah, an unequal, uh, economically unequal society. And, and, and I'm curious as to some of the things he's promising. What is he coming in with? I know one of them is around mining. Like Peru, when, you know, you talk about a rich country, Peru is incredibly wealthy in terms of like copper mines and other mining and Canadian companies and other foreign companies have made a killing off of the Peruvian mining industry. So what is he, what is he bringing to the table now? And, and do you think he can get it done? I mean, uh, I mean, yes. Peru is a, is, a, is a mining country. The problem is that Peru depends on the on, on minerals a lot. Now, actually, over the, 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 the past 20 years, this economic growth has depended on the, how do we export stones, basically, on minerals. No, but but we we haven't been able to transform those exports into a more productive sector or to how to. Uh, Retain those uh, the money that is or the benefits the profit that is pr producing the the mining. So so something that has happened on the one hand is that all these mining companies have been taking advantage of this economic boom, and they when they have been taking this profit out outside of the country. And on the other hand, one of the reasons why his motto and his slogan is no more poor people in a rich country is because for him and for his party and for his allies and for many people who voted for him, they are convinced that it's not only that Peru has to be more sovereign, has mm -hmm. to maintain control of the of the assets, but mm -hmm. also that they win corruption because it's another way how these profits and his money, that the money is going outside the country or is not, benef not going to benefit to the people who need the most, right? It's not wasting really money because it's going on bribes, it's going on paying to other, paying to other uh, person, people of the government. And that explains uh, why there have been many, all the presidents, even before the past one, they, all former presidents, they went to jail or they have been in uh, under accusation, actually. Five presidents since uh, actually if we extend that to the 1990s with Fujimori. All the presidents they have gone to jail or they are or they just fled off the country. Only one who didn't who didn't want to face accusations he took his own life, Alan Garcia, because wow. he, didn't, he, he didn't want to go to jail. But this has been a constant, right? This has been of these of these um, cases that have affected even though this high rank. Functionary, so you can you can understand how corruption has is embedded in the country and why people is so exhausted of voting for the same people and they wanted a new face like Pedro Castillo in some in some parts of the country. What's going on, Fran Tifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.